Our first story is about digital pollution. Perhaps a term many of you may not be familiar with. But do you know, the world is choking on digital pollution. Our digital footprints are contributing more and more to climate change. Watch this report for more. Every time you send an email, chat with your friends on messaging apps, use social media, stream videos or run a Google search, you emit some amount of carbon dioxide, causing digital pollution. So what is the main cause of digital pollution? The huge infrastructure required to bring the internet to the entire world requires a staggering amount of energy. This energy is needed to do a lot of things, run your devices, operate data centers that store your data, maintain servers and power the wireless networks you access. For instance, a single email emits about 4 grams of carbon dioxide if there are no attachments. The one with an attachment has a much bigger impact. The number sounds negligible, right? But do you know that more than 300 billion emails are sent and received every day, globally? And there are around 5 billion internet users worldwide. Imagine how much emissions these mails must be causing on a daily basis. According to Mike Berners-Lee, a fellow at Lancaster University who researches carbon footprints, a typical business user creates more than 135 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions just by sending emails every year. It's equivalent to driving 200 miles in a family car. Streaming videos is also impacting the planet's carbon footprint a term used to describe the total amount of greenhouse gases produced by our activities. Watching online videos accounts for the biggest chunk of the world's internet traffic. It is a whopping 60%, generating 300 million tons of carbon dioxide a year. Pornography accounts for a third of video streaming traffic. It generates as much carbon dioxide as Belgium in a year. On-demand video services account for another third. Final third of the video streaming carbon footprint includes watching YouTube and clips on social media. It's estimated that carbon emissions produced by people watching a month of Netflix's top 10 shows is equivalent to driving a car beyond Saturn which is more than 746 million miles. YouTube is responsible for emitting enough carbon dioxide annually that can easily surpass the greenhouse gas output of Glasgow. Overall, it's estimated that over 1.7 billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions are produced in the manufacture and running of digital technologies around the world. Which means each of us is responsible for producing around 400 kilograms of carbon dioxide a year. It is worrying as the entire ecosystem that revolves around the web causes 3.7% of the planet's total greenhouse gas emissions. You would be shocked to know that it's greater than the gas emissions generated by the airline industry. And these emissions are predicted to double by 2025. Now the big question is, what can be done to reduce the impact of the internet pollution? Let's begin with what companies should do. Big firms like Google, Microsoft, Apple and Netflix are setting ambitious net zero targets. Many of these companies claim to power their data centers using renewable energy, but in most parts of the world they are still majorly dependent on the burning of fossil fuels they must take concrete steps in bringing about change. Jerome Total, vice president of group strategy at a data center near Paris, advocates the use of free cooling tech strategy to limit the environmental impact and energy consumption of data centers. 
It consists of opening up certain technical equipment and recovering the outside air to cool the computer rooms when the weather permits. According to Total, the latest technology has helped the company reduce its energy coefficient by 20%. Besides, internet companies need to make their products more efficient. For instance, YouTube viewers should be given a chance to disable video if they are only listening to audio. Firms must also come up with ways to increase the life cycle of their tech devices. But what about you, the consumer? What can the average user do to cut down on digital pollution? Now that we know how damaging sending or receiving emails could be to the environment, we must do away with unnecessary emails. Just by not sending unnecessary niceties such as thank you emails, we could collectively save tons of carbon emissions. If possible, add links to documents in place of adding attachments. Also, where possible, avoid sending messages to multiple recipients. It's another easy way to reduce digital carbon footprints. It's important that you pay attention to your streaming habits. Some people let video services play as background noise, adding to the carbon footprint without any gain. So if you are not watching videos, don't play them. Also, if possible, switch from high definition to a lower resolution. It will make a difference. Also, using a phone over a mobile network is at least twice as energy intensive as using it over Wi-Fi. So if you can, access video services over Wi-Fi. It's been calculated that app updates and automatic cloud backups account for about 10% of traffic from mobile phones. So switch off unnecessary cloud backups and automatic downloads for app updates. It will help the cause. Many of us have the habit of keeping multiple tabs opened in a browser. Some of them are not even looked at for hours. You are basically consuming energy for nothing. It's better to manage your tabs properly and close the ones not in use. Do your internet search smartly. Instead of searching for a website on Google and then clicking on the link, directly type out the website URL in your address bar. In fact, you can save websites you frequently visit in your favorites. All these shortcuts reduce data processing and carbon emissions. Last but not least, deactivate notifications for apps that are not important. It will also help in saving energy. While there is a lot more that can be done to reduce your digital footprint, these basic tips will set you off on the right track.